Hey everyone, this is Tracy Malone from NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about the fact that divorce is expensive. There's really no getting away with it, whether it's uh, the legal fees, whether you are forced to go to mediation, um, pay mediators, and then it doesn't work and you go back to court, if you're with a narcissist, that is. Um, and then the additional people that could be called into your case. So if you've got children, you could end up with a GAL or a PRE. These are court appointed sort of lawyers for the children, advocates, if you would, different roles, but um, they could be called in and generally both parents have to split the cost of that extra lawyer. And they're representing and doing a lot of work. And I've seen amazing results from them. And I've also seen really horrific things, but there you go. It's been 20, but 20,000 dollars on a GAL or a PRE that you don't even want, but you're being forced to do it because of the court and the conflict that you're involved in. So those can get expensive as well, right? Um, when we get into the money side of things, the um, a lot of lawyers pull in a forensic accountant. And this is where we think that money's being hidden or money's being, you know, not appropriately um, reported and things like that. And they're digging, they're literally looking at every single line on on every single statement and they're putting, the, you know, this equals this and, okay, well, that doesn't go there. Where did that come from? And they are doing a lot of work, but they're not cheap. You know, the cheapest I've seen for a divorce is probably $10,000 opening. The most I've seen is a $40,000 forensic accountant bill. And, and it depends on how many accounts or how many things. If you've got rental properties or you've got other accounts or you've got other homes or other things or boats, then they, the more they have to dig into, the more accounts they're they're like responsible for looking into, the higher the cost is going to be. So depending on where you are in that process, you could end up with a forensic. Now, <laughs> that said... Um, there's a lot of financial teams that do amazing work, very similar to the forensic, but in my opinion, much better uh, options for you where they are finding the money and they are doing a little bit different things than the forensic would. The The legal world seems to really go right to the forensic. Here's the answer. They probably got one on speed dial. But, you know, the other kind of financial teams can help you in so many different ways. And, and I've had a lot of clients and a, a lot of colleagues that do this where they are determining what should be my lowest offer that I will accept? What is a fair offer? What is, how does all this get split? We're putting all this stuff on the plate and what's the fair share? And if you've got inheritances or again, those aren't really counted in divorce, but sometimes they're commingled and there's just legalities of what you're entitled to, retirement accounts and what's the best way. If, if you have a $100,000 retirement and they've got a $100,000 retirement, a financial person like this that I'm describing is going to ascertain that, you know, it's not just you keep yours, I'll keep mine. That sounds logical, but it could be much more complicated than that. It could be that you would pay penalties on yours, but if, if you split it and took half of his and you took half of theirs, then it might be more, you know, financially better for you. These financial people do it. Again, they're not cheap. There are Lots of people that are doing things and you can get in for $5,000 or $10,000 and get this kind of information, but it's not cheap, right? When we get into the mental health part of a divorce, therapists, not cheap. Uh, coaches, personally, I am a coach, so I think coaches save you so much money with legal fees that it's worth the cost of dealing with someone because you're getting your questions answered. You are getting direction. You are getting strategies. You are even getting not legal advice, but go talk to your lawyer, ask them to do this. That sort of um, advice is going to save you from not knowing how to deal with your lawyer, how what to do. So coaches and therapists are going to cost you money. Now let's add the complication of children therapists. Hey, let's say you have three kids and maybe two of them are struggling well, there you go. Now you've got an extra couple hundred bucks a month for the kids to have therapy as well. So you've got a lot of that, but you also got to, got to not think about this. Gosh, I hope it doesn't happen. But the post-divorce legal stuff, 
if you do not get things in writing the correct way and narc proof your decree, you will end up back in court and you will have $20,000 legal bills for just sneezing the wrong direction or trying to fix things that should have been done correctly in the first thing, right? That's the expensive part of the legal and the financial world. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to have other complications. If you think about it, you're either going to have to buy them out of the house. How will you do that? Will you refinance the house? Well, interest rates are not so good these days. So that's going to cost you a lot more. And what you think the mortgage is right now, and I'll use hypothetically, the mortgage is $1,000, I'll just refinance it. No, now it's going to be $1,500 or, or far greater than that because of the interest fees, right? So buying them out could end up costing you a lot more money because of the way that the mortgage system is are working right now. And let's say you can't buy them out. You're not going to stay in the house and you're in a rental house. And now rental house are also the, the housing market is crazy and you're going to spend a lot more than I get that hypothetical. No one has a thousand dollar mortgage, but a lot more than that mortgage. You're going to spend double or triple that if you've got children and you need X many bedrooms for the children. Things are, are expensive, right? Let's get into healthcare now. If you had insurance through your um ex-spouse, that you can opt for COBRA. That is generally the most expensive way to do it. And I often discourage clients and I say, go look, please go look, because it's simple to stay on the same plan and all. But A, there's risks. They could actually have access to your records. I have a lot of clients that are on a COBRA situation and all of their, you know, the health things after you go to a doctor, go to their ex because they're the holder of the policy. So you have to make sure you protect yourself in that way if you go with the COBRA option. Going on your own is the next option for health insurance and it's not cheap. And if you are the one covering the children, ding, 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 it's going to get even bigger, right? So... You know, we also have to think about, and people should remember that the state insurances that we have now, you know, formerly called Obamacare, right? The exchange servers are for people with a lower income. So if you are going to be surviving on alimony or child support or a, a low paying job, you may be qualified for something like that. And you will save thousands of dollars by doing something like that versus going with a private pay. So there's going to be money, right? Let's think about childcare. You know, if, if you were the stay-at-home mom now, but now you've got all these bills and you got to pay a mortgage in, it's not just the mortgage, right? All the expenses are on you. You guys used to split the electric bill and the cable bill and the this bill and the cell phone bill. And now all of a sudden that's all on you. So there's a really good chance that you might have to go back to work. And if you go back to work, right? What's going to happen to the kids? Who's going to pick them up? Maybe you have younger children and you need full-time childcare just to be able to work, right? So expensive. This this is all of this. And I think the last thing that I really want to bring up is the taxes. And you probably saved money by filing jointly. So you're going to have less of a tax break. Now, if you were the one to hold on to the house, then you'll get that deduction and be able to, to, to deduct a little bit off of what you might owe because of owning the home. But altogether, divorce is expensive. And, um, you know, post-divorce abuse is probably the, the scariest part because you kind of just think, oh, I made it through. And then the next thing you know, you're back in court fighting over stupid piddly things that could have been solved in the beginning. And um, anyway... Divorce is expensive. That's the whole point of this video. I'm not telling you anything you didn't know. I'm just telling you that there are options from going with the forensic and hitting yourself with a ten thousand dollar, you know, retainer, and not knowing what the cap is. There are financial people that do cap things that do have a lot more sort of goalposts of how much you're going to know you're you're going to pay to investigate where the money is or whatever you need them to do. Right. So. This is Terry Malone from Narcissist Abuse Support. If you are struggling with a narcissist and going through a divorce, my book, which I should have picked up, but it's over there on the shelf, Divorcing Your Narcissist, You Can't Make This Shit Up, is really a great resource. And it's going to give you a lot of the tips to understand how to get through this process. So I will see you again next time. Thank you.